Hello, welcome to Business Management Chapter 4.2. My name is Johanna. I have no credentials and I don't know what to say. Let's just get into it. So 4.2 is about marketing planning. So what does a market plan or marketing plan involve? So it involves marketing objectives. These are objectives to meet your mission and vision statements. They have to be smart, which means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, or realistic, and time-specific. Then there are also key strategic plans, which are steps to provide an overview of how the marketing objectives will be achieved. There are detailed market action, so this is providing information about specific marketing activities that are carried out. Um, for example, uh, strategic pricing or, you know, activities. Um, then there's the marketing budget, which includes essentially the finance you need to do all of your marketing strategies, how much are you allowed to use, and so on and so forth. So the benefits and limitations of a marketing plan. So the benefits are that it helps you be more organized. It increases your chances of success since your objectives are smart. It helps you identify potential problems. It helps you make sure that you are not wasting any money on unprofitable activities. And it can also help motivate employees because they are confident in the organization's future. Limitations are that the marketing plan may become outdated, the, mo the process may take time to do, and if you fail to prioritize the right things, it could be difficult to tell whether you are meeting them or not. The objectives, that is. One of the most important factors of marketing is the marketing mix. So the four P's of the marketing mix are product, price, promotion, place. So a product is a good or service that is being offered in the market. It should meet the needs and wants of customers and hopefully have a USP, which is a unique selling point. So here's a toothbrush, for instance, <laughs> if we're going with the same example as last time. Um, price. This is the amount customers are charged for a product. Promotion. This refers to the various ways in which a consumer are informed about or persuaded to purchase a product. So there are many methods for this. I just wrote a TV because that's the most basic thing that people think of, like, oh, an advertisement on TV. Um, place, I didn't really know what to draw, so I just drew a house, but a place is um, the product's location or the channel of distribution used to get a product to consumers. So this would be a shop or an online store or anything like that. An important aspect about how you use the marketing mix is that it has to be appropriate. So. For instance, you should probably not be selling <laughs> in a children's magazine. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Why did I go there? Um, ignore that. Okay, I'm gonna make a new example. Um, just, I died. Okay. Ah, okay, just ignore me. Um, but yes, um, let's say it's like selling a house, a mansion or a house in a children's magazine. That would not be appropriate because children are not in the right age group or have them enough money to buy that. I just wrote chids, which I'm assuming is a combination of kids and children. Sorry. Um, yes. And more about the marketing mix will come up in 4.5. So, market segmentation, targeting, and consumer profiles. So, if you see the huge circle as the entire market, you can see the smaller circles as segments. So, segments refers to a subgroup of customers with similar characteristics in a given market. Market segmentation is the process of dividing the market into smaller or distinct groups of consumers in effort to specifically to meet their desires and needs, and that's how the book defines it. And uh, the even smaller little triangle thingies are the target groups, and the dots are the niche 
audience. And niche means it's like super specific, very odd combination maybe. Well, it doesn't have to be odd, but like very small specific group. So segmentation can be done in a few different ways. There's demographic segmentation. This um, considers the different characteristics of the human population, which are like um, very solid and like age, gender, religion, ethnic group, like those types of things. Um, there's geographic segmentation, which is about, well, where you are, essentially. So location, country, part of country, stuff like that. And then there's psychographic segmentation, which is essentially your lifestyle. So this would be social and economic status, values, so like morals. Um, this could be environmental morals or stuff like that. Okay, so there are three main marketing strategies. So the first one is mass marketing or the mass marketing strategy, which is undifferentiated communication. This means that there is no identified target group or target audience. And the, the four Ps of the marketing mix it stays exactly the same. So whether you're marketing to women, children, whatever, there's no distinction. Everything is the same. An example of this is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is Coca-Cola everywhere around the world. There is no differentiated communication. The second market strategy is segmented marketing strategy. You use different communication depending on what audience you are targeting. You have identified a target audience and a segment, and you modify your advertisement, your promotion, your P's of the marketing mix to fit with that group. An example of this is H&M. They will market to the children's section differently from the women's section or men's section. The third strategy is the niche marketing strategy. The niche marketing strategy essentially just means that you have picked out a segment, you've picked out a target audience, and you've picked out a niche target audience, and you have extremely modified the four Ps of the marketing mix to target that audience and persuade them and meet their needs. An example of this would be a company selling products to uh, the niche audience of pilots who have cats who like to skateboard. So when it comes to the segmentation, there are customer profiles where these companies can see the information about the customers. This includes age, gender, social status, income levels, and it can also include spending patterns of the customers. Positioning is about an analysis this analysis is of how customers just define and perceive a product compared to other products in the market. So you're comparing to other companies. Um, you can do this by making a map positioning model. A map positioning model is looks something like this. So where I've written high and low, it would be from high to low, but you would have to put a USP in um, a unique selling point of your company and then compare it to other companies. So let's say it's the, for instance, you could take the amount of stores and the amount of products. So then you would put out the companies to where they are to see if, are you at the top here? Are you the best? Or is this really a unique selling point or are you just basic? You know, that's what you use it for. <laughs> So the importance of having a USP. So it helps establish a firm's competitive advantage. So this shows what is different with your product compared to other companies. And it leads to customer loyalty as they can identify with something special that they can compare with other products. Otherwise, it would just be nothing. And this can relate to any of the four Ps in the marketing mix. You can have a unique product, a unique price, a unique place, or a unique promotion. So that was it for chapter 4.2.
Subscribe, like, comment, follow me at Johanna Frenert on Instagram if you want to. And um, goodbye. Hopefully you learned something.